allora sono riuscito a mettermi in contatto con il signor Bermeio eccoci se la tecnologia ce lo permette Tomis ok Oggi ce lo permette, a brevissimo saremo in contatto con il signor Bermeio. Chiedo scusa ancora, ma è proprio il bello della diretta, no? Eh, come dicevo prima... Buongiorno! Good morning, sir! How are you? Uh, good morning, very well, and yourself? Not too bad at all. Thank you so much for taking some time out on your free day uh, to have a chat with me. It's my pleasure. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I'm going to um, give you a, a little bit of an introduction. Uh, for uh, I, I Undoubtedly, I mean, uh, I'm sure most people know you anyway. Um, but, um, you know, just for those that maybe don't uh, and are listening to us for the first time, and I will try and translate in Italian as I go along, if that's okay. Sure, of course. Fantastic, thank you so much. Quindi ragazzi, assolutamente la tecnologia è dalla nostra parte anche quest'oggi. Um, diamo il benvenuto a un'icona un della miscelazione mondiale. Inizia a lavorare, parleremo un pochino di quello che um, ha, ha fatto nel, nella sua vita lavorativa. Uh, inizia a lavorare nel ristorante di famiglia. Um, <ride> Potremmo parlare in spagnolo anche? No, lo che tu quieras. Ok, ok, ok. Andiamo in italiano e inglese. Um, ok, e inizia a lavorare nel ristorante del, della famiglia. Negli anni Ottanta inventa un'icona della miscelazione eh, con i distratti di Agape come il, uh, il, uh, il Tommy's Margarita. Just, I'm just watching the comments from uh, Paolo from Altos. Um, oh, nice. Hi, Paolo. <laughs> and... Um, e, Lavora, lavora tutt'oggi come beverage manager nel, nel suo ristorante, è riconosciuto come un'icona del, del, dei distillati di agave, eh, quindi tequila e non solo, in tutto il mondo. Diamo il benvenuto al The One and Only Julio Bermeo. Uh, is it buonasera? Or... Well, yeah, buonasera qui, um, uh, uh, yeah, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., so buonasera. Yeah, buonasera to everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Fantastic, fantastic. So, Julio, how is the situation in San Fran at the moment with this very delicate time we're all going through? Uh, the situation has gotten worse. Today wow. is our first day that we return to curfew. Okay. So, from 10 o'clock at night, To yeah. five in the morning, um, everyone has to be off the streets. Yep. In terms of bars, bars are closed. Mm -hmm. uh, bars and or restaurants that have bars can mm -hmm. be open for takeout. Yeah. But business is very slow for yeah. most of us. Of Some course. Some people are doing very well, but it's very slow. <laughs> I can imagine. It's, it's exactly, we have the exactly same situation here. We can have... Um, um, Places to do food, you can do takeout and delivery, which is, you know, it's not too bad, but uh, it, it's obviously not enough for a lot of bars. Unfortunately, a lot have had to, uh, have had to close for, for good. Yeah. Here as well, um, we've, we've stayed open to try to maintain employment for our team. Absolutely. But coming into winter, yeah. it becomes more and more difficult, not that San Francisco has a tough winter. Yeah. But once it starts to rain, no one really wants to be outside eating. No, I can imagine. Absolutely. Uh, quindi il, uh, ho chiesto al signor Bermeio appunto com'è la situazione attualmente a San Francisco. Eh, loro hanno la stessa situazione che abbiamo noi in Italia, quindi eh, dove c'è il, il coprifuoco dalle 10 della, della sera fino alle 5 del mattino e molti dei locali sono attualmente aperti soltanto per delivery o takeaway. Eh, giustamente San Francisco, che comunque è una di, quei, di, di quelle città che vive tantissimo di turismo, non che abbiano una, un inverno particolarmente freddo, particolarmente tosto, a differenza di altre zone degli Stati Uniti, eh, sicuramente per cercare di mantenere 
e il, gli stipendi in questo caso del suo staff in qualche maniera stanno cercando di, di campare un pochino come tutti noi penso But, well fingers crossed this situation finishes as soon as possible so we can all host our our uh, our customers back at the bar like like we like we know best i suppose we're hoping for a vaccine mm -hmm. unfortunately um in america many people have politicized the use of the mask and yeah. coronavirus yeah so here until there's a vaccine this country will still have difficulties no, i can imagine i can imagine absolutely well I, without getting too much into the politics side of things we we kind of have issues like this out here as well some people are pro some people are against so it's it's a very difficult time for all of us i think and um I'm not sure how, how this is going to end up for most of us, but hopefully, uh, you know, fingers crossed we'll be back to normality as soon as possible. Uh, yes, but in San Francisco, it's said that 50% of all bars and restaurants will go out of business. Wow. That's such good news. That really yeah. is bad news. <laughs> Uh, well, let's let's talk about um, slightly slightly happier things um, about Tommy's, the institution that it is, and about your figure. Um, this is a question that's been uh, you know gone through my mind uh, uh, for the build up to this. Uh, why tequila? Why agave spirits? How how did you uh, grow a passion for for agave spirits? You know. <laughs> I, my passion for agave spirits really grew out of loving to drink and get drunk. <laughs> like and, most of us. <laughs> but when I was young, uh, when I was in my, my teens, 13, 14, 15, I would drink uh, beer, brandy, and rum. Fantastic. I just saw that the hangover was terrible with this. <laughs> And growing up in the business, while well, we would obviously steal alcohol from the business. Yeah. And, and after drinking lots of rum and brandy and beer, uh, one day I decided, hey, let's steal some tequila. <laughs> and that was an eye opener and a game changer. Uh, absolutely. Quindi ho chiesto, ho chiesto al signor uh, Vermeio come mai questa sua passione eh, per, per i distillati di agave, tequila e non solo. E lui ci sta raccontando che quando aveva 13-14 anni ha iniziato a bere, ad ubriacarsi e um, comunque a, a, a conoscere alcuni liquori distillati che beveva all'epoca, tanta birra, tanto rum. E, um, e, e notava che aveva dei gran mal di testa il giorno dopo, come, come la maggior parte di noi, eh, penso, almeno una volta nella vita, e, e di conseguenza um, ha iniziato a esplorare alcune, alcune altre opzioni che aveva, spesso volentieri si trovava a, a, a rubare anche, non, si, non so se si può dire, dei, 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 dei prodotti dal, dal locale e un bel giorno iniziò a bere eh, tequila. So, how did, how did it all develop from there? Because, I mean, You know, we're fortunately we're used to some fantastic products on the market today. But what was it like, you know, back then? Well, so back then, um, at Tommy's, we only carried 200% agave products. Okay. And our pouring brand was a mixto by Casa Cuervo called Matador. And okay. And then it became Hero, but. Ornitos from mm -hmm. Salsa yeah. and Herradura Reposado were available. Okay. And really, Herradura Reposado changed my life. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can imagine. But then, in 1989, my world exploded when new tequilas made the scene. Mm -hmm. And primarily, those tequilas were El Tesoro de Don Felipe. Mm -hmm. And Patron. Okay. Those yeah. were products, when they were released, a bartender friend of mine um, that got access to the products first told me to come to his bar to try them. And I was okay. blown away by how delicious yeah. those products were to me. 
Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Quindi nel, um, una volta che ha iniziato a, a, ad esplorare il mondo del, delle agavi, appunto del tequila, all'epoca ehm, utilizzavano un tequila mixto appunto al Tommy's, ehm, però c'era ehm, disponibile, avevano anche l'erradura repotato. E, ehm, nell'89 un suo carissimo amico, nonché bartender anche lui, ha iniziato a fargli ehm, assaggiare altri prodotti come appunto Patron. Um, and, and how, how did you um, sort of come across the idea that you wanted to push tequila so much in Tommy's? Well, so at Tommy's, we were, very, we were already quite well known for our margaritas. Okay. Because we've, we've always used fresh lime juice squeezed on the spot. On the spot, yeah. Right, but before the, the, the margarita was... You know, mixto tequila, it was um, some triple sec, simple syrup, and fresh lime juice, yeah. right? When I start to try different tequilas, where I really wanted to taste the tequila, mm -hmm. I felt that it was important that our customers also started to learn about and appreciate the taste of tequila itself. Yeah. Prior to this, in America, people wanted to cover up the. Un attimo, abbiamo perso il collegamento. Okay. So, so just, I wanted people to taste tequila. Yeah. I didn't want the tequila to be covered up, even in the cocktail. Okay. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Quindi il, il signor Bermeo ci sta raccontando appunto che lo sviluppo del tequila all'epoca al alla, Tommy erano già mh, conosciuti per il, il loro margarita, che però la ricetta che utilizzavano all'epoca appunto era tequila triple sec, ehm, e zucchero e, e lime spremuto sul momento aveva comunque eh, un, una capacità di copertura del, del distillato in sé per sé. Quindi la, la, la volontà di, di, di Julio appunto era di far sentire la, le, le, le proprietà organolettiche, le, le caratteristiche del, del distillato in questione, appunto tequila. And, and I'm guessing this is how Tommy's was born. Uh, yes, indeed. But the crazy part that was very difficult uh, economically mm -hmm. was the difference in price between mixto and 100% yeah. agave. Yeah. Because yeah. at that time, you know, this is 30 years ago, yeah. a liter of mixto tequila was about $5. Okay. And a liter of erradura blanco was $20. Wow. And That's we didn't crazy. raise the price of the cocktail so high so okay. my father you know would tell me this is a bad idea <laughs> you know where's we're, we're not making money yeah you know and Absolutely. i mean we were making money but not making as much not money so much. Oh, yeah the drink but cost I, to be changed correct yeah but what i told my father was i know this is more expensive but this is really an incredible ingredient yes and our customers will one day know the difference yeah absolutely absolutely il, il, il problema che, che c'era all'epoca qui stiamo parlando di circa 30 anni fa ragazzi giusto per farvi capire eh, su, su una scala eh, tipo timeline di quanto tempo fa stavamo parlando all'epoca uno dei leader produttori di tequila mixto faceva pagare un litro di tequila, di tequila mixto appunto 5 dollari 5 dollari a differenza di un prodotto 100% agave qui stiamo parlando di herradura che veniva 20 dollari al litro quindi potete immaginare che comunque la differenza era sostanziale ehm, e dove però il, il prezzo del, del cocktail non, non, non cambiava lui faceva pagare comunque lo stesso il, il, il margarita lo stesso prezzo nonostante utilizzasse un prodotto che costasse quattro volte di più quindi ehm, 
sicuramente il, il, il padre, in questo caso, di signor Bermeo, gli spiegava che non, non, non era un no bueno, come si dice eh, negli Stati Uniti, e, e sicuramente era una cosa un po' controproducente per l'andasso del, del business dell'epoca. So what, what changes did you make, Julio? I'm sorry? What changes did you make? Did you well, just the significant change was Tommy's became the first restaurant in the United States to stop selling regular tequila or mixto tequila. <laughs> and we went exclusively to 100% agave wow. by putting Eradura Blanco Suave in the well even though our customers did not understand it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this is a problem that uh, uh, most of us have had, I think, at least once in our lifetime, where, uh, you know, try to um, explain the differences between a quality spirit, where it, whether it may be tequila, whether it may be uh, a rum or a, or a whiskey, as opposed to, a lower end, you know, I'm not, I'm not mentioning any names here by, by all means, but I think what we try to put across, especially with our, um, we do bartending courses, I run a bartending school here, um, is that every product has a usage. Of okay? course. Um, obviously, how you use it is up, to, is up to us, is how, you know, how much we know about the products itself is up to us, but to use the best product to get the best possible outcome with, within a given drink. Yeah, that's a very good point. Unfortunately, in the tequila sector, over the last 15 years, um, because tequila finds itself in a very difficult position in that mm -hmm. it has the longest maturation rate for raw material in the world, it has yeah. the highest wholesale cost of goods for yeah. any alcohol in the world. Yeah. What has happened is hundred, the term 100% agave yeah. is losing some of its meaning. Yeah. And there are now producers that literally make tequila that is 100% agave, yeah. but use chemicals. So now they can make tequila very cheaply Yeah. But it doesn't taste mm. of the raw material. Yeah, absolutely. E il signor Bermeo ci sta spiegando um, che il, il, discorso, il discorso del, del tequila appunto è proprio questo. Il, la, la, la sua volontà, la sua capacità appunto era di smettere di vendere tequila mixto all'interno del, del, del loro locale, del, del, del Tommy's, e utilizzare soltanto 100% agave. Eh, scelta azzardata all'epoca sicuramente anche perché eh, come, come dice il signor Bermeo per produrre eh, un 100% agave ci hanno dei costi di produzione molto, molto alti il tequila ha la materia prima in questo caso appunto la pianta di agave più alto di qualsiasi altro distillato e di conseguenza il, il prodotto il, la materia prima in questione aveva già dei costi altissimi già all'epoca absolutely, absolutely Yeah. So, for example, when today, if you go to the store mm -hmm. and there's a 100% agave tequila blanco that costs 50% less than a major brand, it's because that It lesser known brand is using chemicals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a very, very important point that you've made, I think. Um, nowadays, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, The big brands have found the need. Uh, I think it's probably to do with uh, the fact that tequila has become so common around the world. You know, uh, it's you know, um, I've I've been I've been taught I've been I, I've read up uh, that you know agave plants take many many years to grow, and therefore it's not such an immediate process. You know, so uh, with with the growing uh, consumption of tequila. Uh, on a worldwide wide scale, I, I can imagine that, you know, the, 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 the tequileros and the jimadores are finding it hard to keep up with, with, uh, with, with the requests. 
It, yes, they are, and and especially today, with with COVID yeah. limiting people's ability to work and produce, and also limiting transport, there are severe shortages of tequila in America. For yeah, example, sure. Don Julio is is sold out. Patron is sold out. That's yeah. amazing because those are very big brands absolutely. with great distribution. Yes, absolutely. E stiamo, stiamo appunto dicendo del fatto che comunque eh, ci sono tante aziende eh, multinazionali, senza appunto fare nomi, dove eh, hanno preferito, dato che i costi di produzione del tequila sono molto molto alti e una pianta di agave comunque eh, impiega parecchi anni per arrivare alla giusta maturità per poi essere lavorata ed essere trasformata in tequila ehm, alcuni utilizzano, si aiutano con dell'utilizzo del, di, di parti chimiche, che eh, parti chimiche eh, per, per cercare di arrivare a, ad un prodotto più o meno eh, commestibile ovviamente il, la qualità del prodotto si sente, chi conosce il tequila sente la differenza tra un prodotto 100% agave o un prodotto che è, è stato toccato in qualche maniera. Ovviamente con l'aumento la, de, de, della richiesta del, del tequila e non solo tequila, anche altri prodotti derivati dalla, de, de, dalle agavi, la, ci sono tante aziende come Patron, come Don Julio, che stanno andando in seria difficoltà, specialmente in questi periodi di Covid, dove la lavorazione, il, il poter lavorare, non, non sono così eh, liberi, tra virgolette, eh, stanno andando in, in difficoltà a, a cercare di, di eh, continuare a produrre tequila per eh, assecondare appunto gli, le richieste del mercato. Absolutely, absolutely. So, how many labels of tequila do you currently have in Tommy's? Big question. So, at Tommy's right now, we have two lists of tequila okay. one for the general public so we have over 325 uh different 100 percent agave products okay and then we have an additional vintage list uh, okay. of about 120 different things wow. which is the largest vintage tequila list in the world Yeah, che non immagino. Ho chiesto al signor Vermeio quanti, eh, quante, quanti, quante tipologie di tequila hanno, quante bottiglie di tequila hanno. Hanno una lista dove hanno 325 referenze per il pubblico, eh, tra virgolette, e dopodiché hanno un'altra lista con 125 referenze eh, di, di, di varie riserve eh, di, di tequila eh, che potete immaginare non sono necessariamente alla portata di tutti. That's, that's fantastic. That's a, that's a big list. That's a big yeah, list. it is. And especially with the pandemic, it's been a little sad because there have been products that have been released that are exceptionally really good. Yeah. But yeah. with the amount of revenue we have, yeah. we cannot buy them because... Yeah. There's no one to introduce them to. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So it's been very hard. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, I think a, a lot of those brands that you're talking about, I mean, uh, the, we're a little unfortunate he, out here in Europe because a lot of those brands don't reach us. Uh, whether it's a, a question of, uh, you know, marketing cho uh, choices or whether they, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, brands don't necessarily make produce enough to be able to export out to Europe. Um, but yeah, it, it'd be definitely nice to be able to taste that, uh, at least one part of that list at some point. <laughs> oh, thank you. Can I talk a little bit about celebrity tequila? Of course, yes, absolutely. So in Mexico, the tequila category is the most registered product category of goods and services. It okay. seems like everyone and his mother wants to have a brand of tequila. Yeah. So athletes, movie stars, they all want tequila really because good. it's yeah. cool. Yeah. However, unfortunately, most of them 
do not do good due diligence and mm-hmm. end up buying liquid that is very mediocre and mm-hmm. they just put it in fancy bottles yeah and the packaging does a lot yes absolutely so sometimes it said the uglier the bottle in the package probably the better the tequila <laughs> fantastic fantastic <coughs> pardon <coughs> Il signor Bermeo ci sta spiegando appunto dove il, in Messico adesso è diventata un, una moda, tra virgolette, di iniziare a produrre tequila o comunque essere coinvolti nella produzione di tequila. Tanto che negli Stati Uniti ci sono tantissimi attori e, e artisti, e musicisti che si stanno buttando tantissimo in questo mondo. Spesso e volentieri però molti di questi prodotti non sono necessariamente prodotti di qualità, come dice eh, Julio, appunto, il fatto che non, non fatevi ingannare dalla bottiglia. Spesso e volentieri ci sono dei, dei, dei tequila magari mediocri ehm, in, in bottiglie molto molto belle, a differenza c'è un detto appunto che eh, dicono che se la, più brutta è la bottiglia, più buona è il tequila all'interno. Fantastico, fantastico stuff. Uh, it, it's obviously nice to, you know, to be to be able to hear this from from such a you know a protagonist of this of this world. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, Mr. Bermeo, tequila has always been um, known, uh, or rather, at least in Europe, has always been utilized a lot for mixology. You know, for mixing drinks. Um, I'm a big fan of drinking a good tequila. Over ice, or sometimes delicious. even a... sorry, the delicious. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you, do you have what are your opinion on you know why do you think this is not a fashion that we have out here in Europe? I'm obviously talking a lot about Italy, but I've travelled a lot for work, and unfortunately, this is not something I've found in in a lot of places. Yeah, I think. Um... The availability of products uh, and the awareness, but also, you know, tequila suffers, but also mm-hmm. benefits from the fact that it is mostly well known for only one cocktail, yeah. which is, of course, the margarita. Yeah. But tequila, in my opinion, because of the fact that it is aged and commercialized in several expressions yeah. is the most versatile denomination yeah. of origin spirit in the world. Fantastic. Just most people don't know this. So the yeah. ability to make cocktails is much greater with tequila because you can make cocktails based around unaged distillates mm-hmm. all the way to aged distillates. Okay. Uh, and it's denomination of origin. So yeah, yeah. it's just awareness that we need yeah. more of. Absolutely. E, dicevo con, con il signor Bermeo il fatto che uh, una cosa che ho notato tantissimo, al, uh, specialmente in Europa, che il tequila spesso e volentieri viene utilizzato quasi sempre solo per miscelazione. Uh, io personalmente sono un amante di bere anche uh, alcuni tequila lisci, uh, magari su un bel cubo di ghiaccio. Eh, lo apprezzo tantissimo eh, il signor Bermeo eh, ci sta appunto raccontando il fatto che spesso e volentieri questo è dovuto dal fatto che non abbiamo la disponibilità di tutti i prodotti e l'assortimento di tutti i prodotti che ci sono magari negli Stati Uniti o in Messico stesso ehm, eh, perché comunque il tequila spesso e volentieri è solo riconosciuto per un cocktail che è appunto il margarita margarita e tutte le sue varianti di conseguenza eh, quello che ci dice è nonostante comunque è uno di, di, di quei distillati molto più versatili di quello che noi pensiamo eh, adesso di, di, di classici cocktail con il, con, il, con il tequila magari non ce ne sono tantissimi a differenza di altri distillati però sicuramente non abbiate paura di miscelarli anche in altre maniere a differenza di, 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 dei soliti cocktail insomma I'm a big fan of Paloma myself Other Oh, the love Palomas too. Um, I think I think they're very they're very easy to twist as well, you know. Yes, but but it's also important to note in the Paloma and in the Margarita, 
that if you make a Paloma with a Highland Blanco, yeah, and then you make it with a Valley Blanco, the okay. character of the cocktail is completely different. Yes, absolutely. Likewise, if you make a Paloma with a Reposado from a different area. Yeah, absolutely. So it really makes a difference what tequila you use. And that's what people don't understand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, I think as well, um, compared to other spirits, please don't, don't get angry by me saying this, but compared to other spirits, I think tequila has less cla classic cocktails, um, or less known classic cocktails. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. For sure. You, you see what I mean? So, you yes. know, you have the Martita, you have the Tommy's, you have the Paloma, but if you if you ask a lot of people, name me a tequila cocktail, they won't go beyond those three. Correct. Now, okay. what's interesting, you know, uh, I alluded earlier that today, tequila is the only alcohol in America not looking for one new customer. The yeah. tequila industry cannot make enough tequila for yeah. the people who want it. Now, yeah. tequila has never been like vodka or like jit or like some other unaged distillates. Yeah. That'll say, oh, uh, please use tequila more, mm -hmm. substitute it in any yeah. recipe. Yeah. But if you do substitute tequila in many Abbiamo qualche problema di connessione con il signor Bermeio. Ok. In many yeah. classics, you find yeah. a different twist, but yeah. often the twist with tequila tastes better than the original. For example, yeah. in a bramble, uh, yeah. in an old fashioned with aged tequila. Yeah. In a in a Tegroni, right? Yeah. I mean they're delicious. Yeah. But absolutely. it's just a matter of the bartender experimenting a little bit. Experimenting and knowing what he's what he or she is handling. Yes. Knowing 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 what he, what you have behind the bar and when you go to buy a new bottle of, of a spirit or liqueur, exactly know what you're handling. Absolutely. Yes. Il, il signor Bermeo, stavo raccontando appunto il signor Bermeo che spesso e volentieri per quanto riguarda i cocktail con, con il tequila eh, la nostra mente non va oltre quello che è il margarita, il Tommy's e il Paloma e, a differenza di tanti altri distillati eh, magari a, a meno classici, a meno cocktail classici a differenza magari di un gin o, o di, un, di un whisky per esempio Però come, dice, come ci suggerisce Julio, appunto, è, mh, provate anche a fare dei twist su cocktail classici, come per esempio un old fashioned con un tequila reposado, a differenza di un Negroni, per esempio, un cocktail che a me piace tantissimo, il Negroni con... I usually, I usually do a half and half. I do usually half tequila and half, half an ounce of mezcal in my Negroni. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I, I love the smoky notes, you know, the the sort of, um, obviously depending on what mezcal I have available, but um, it, it's one of my favorites, absolutely. Yeah, that's delicious. Yeah, yep. excellent. excellent. So, um, you have your own tequila. Well, we're trying. So, okay. I, I don't know if many people know, but my wife, my wife's mm -hmm. family owns Tequila Tapatio. Okay. Uh, so Tapatio is a company that makes tequila Tapatio, El Tesoro de Don Felipe, and okay. Ocho. Uh, we know uh, Ocho. And then my brother-in-law, uh, Felipe Camarena, owns a distillery and makes G4 and okay. Terra Alta. Amazing. Okay. But okay. my wife and I have been trying to build a small distillery ourselves. Wow. And 
Uh, it's kind of like we make a joke. It's like the ruins in Mexico. It's taken us over 10 years, but we're slowly <laughs> but surely yeah. continuing to build. But we, uh, we would like to launch a brand called L and J, Lily and Julio. Okay. Uh, one day. And it'll be okay. tequila made the way my, grand, my wife's grandfather, Don Felipe Camarena, made tequila. So completely natural and in the old school way. Fantastic, fantastic. E quindi ho, ho chiesto al signor Julio, so che ha questo progetto di, eh, por sta portando avanti questo progetto di iniziare a, a, a produrre tequila anche lui insieme a sua moglie. E ci sta raccontando che la, la, la famiglia di sua moglie ehm, ha un'azienda che si chiama Zapatio, che pre mh, produce alcuni tequila, tra cui tequila occio, che sicuramente alcuni di voi conoscete. E, mh, è un... È un un procedimento che gli sta portando via tanto tempo, eh, piano piano stanno eh, mettendo mattoncino per mattoncino al loro progetto e sicuramente gli auguriamo di, di poter iniziare la produzione di tequila e magari perché no avere eh, un po' del suo tequila anche in, in Europa. It, when it goes ahead, are you planning to take over Europe as well? Oh, we'd love to. That'd be I would love to. I, so I have to confess that the country I miss most is Mexico during okay. the pandemic. Yeah. But the country that I would love to go back to more often than any is Italia. I love fantastic. Italia, so I bet you <laughs> Italia will get it before most of Europe. Well, f fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to host you here at the school and uh, make, oh, make some wonderful. leaders together. That would be yes, fun time. please. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. What, what do you, obviously, pandemic aside, um, do you have any, any projects that you'd like to share with us um, or, or any, anything new that you may be working on or plan to work on as soon as this um, historic moment is, is behind us? Yes, absolutely. So with, uh, with two partners – With Tony mm -hmm. Abu Ghanem and a gentleman named David Grapsi, we formed okay. a new company okay. called Tag Global. Okay. And Tag Global is a company that we hope will revolutionize the spirits competition. Okay. So uh, there are spirits competitions all over the world, and we just want to make a spirits competition where we truly have a global judging panel of wow, arguably the best palettes in the world coming okay. from all continents. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And you can Google it, Tag Global and learn yeah. more about it if you like. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll make sure that um, all our viewers know uh, about this. Um, ho chiesto al signor Bermeo se aveva appunto dei nuovi progetti che aveva piacere di... Uh, condividere con noi. Um, we have uh, one of one of the. F uh, I'm just going to share this with you because I actually have. I I, I need to grab something. Um, okay. Well, we have one of the fellows that um, runs uh, the school called Jonathan. Uh, met you uh, last time you were in Milan. Okay, and I have. Your business card right oh, here. Oh, wow. And he said, uh, apparently, you have two bottles of tequila you should be drinking with him or something. I, I'm waiting for him to come visit so we can drink them. Well, okay. Well, actually, we've, we, um, I, I'll leave this part. I, I'll translate this part first, otherwise, you'll get lost. Uh, quindi, il signor Bermeo ci sta raccontando che appena um, da poco. Um, creato una nuova azienda con altri tre soci dove ha piacere di eh, la, il loro intento è di creare delle competizioni di barman mondiali eh, a tutti gli effetti dove il, eh, i giudici saranno appunto i migliori talenti disponibili eh, in, nel, nei periodi nostri eh, la, vi darò anche il il nome del sito che così potete cercare su Google per ulteriori informazioni. 
Uh, now we've we've started uh, producing um, uh, a liquor of our own. Uh, it's it's not a lot to do with the tequila world. It's a uh, it's a Falerno. It's um oh. much more to do with the tiki world, and hopefully uh, yeah. at some point, we'll, yeah. And um, it's made with Jamaican rum, so we're sticking to the tradition here. We're very close to tradition. It it is nice. blended in Italy, but uh, of course the the, the raw materials are not Italian, as you can imagine. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll have to come over to the U.S. at some point, and San Francisco will definitely be one of those places that we go to. Yes, and congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Julio, I will not take up any more of your time. You have been wonderful. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Please, if anybody has a question that's specific... Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. You can email me Julio at Tommy's Tequila dot com, and I'll gladly answer your questions. Thank you, thank you so much, Julio. Um, remind us uh, the name of your website or how we can Google your company. Uh, uh, well, the website is Tommy's Tequila dot com. Yeah. And then tag Global Spirits dot com. Okay. Uh, and yeah, either way, but send me an email if you have any questions, and I'd love to answer them. Julio, it has been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully, we'll be able to meet up uh, in, in better conditions and not by a, a hideous telephone call. <laughs> yes, I hope so, too. And thank you. Thank you to everyone listening, and I look forward to being in Italy soon and sharing you, a glass you. of tequila or a Tommy's with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Julio, all the best. Thank you, thank you so much. Grazie mille, Anto. Ciao. Ciao, ciao Julio. Ringraziamo ancora eh, il signor Bermeio che è stato veramente fantastico. Eh, io ringrazio voi per averci seguito nonostante eh, le, le, le complicanze tecniche, ma è proprio questo il bello della diretta, anche eh, perché a San Francisco sono, erano le 9.30 quando abbiamo provato a collegarci per la prima volta. Eh, vi auguro una buona serata mi raccomando seguiteci sui nostri social The Garish Cocktail Repairing su Facebook, su Instagram e adesso abbiamo anche il canale YouTube dove tutte le dirette verranno caricate periodicamente ragazzi grazie ancora un saluto, un abbraccio virtuale a tutti quanti ciao